I've gotten addicted to Hollow Knight, by the way, but screw it. Let's rank the boss alters of win easiest to hardest. First on our list, we have this random wolf guy trying to intimidate us with his ability to literally clone himself like Copycat and Prop Tropica. Each time you kill him, he splits in two until eventually he stops because, well, I, I, I don't know, I guess he just got bored. The boss seems like it'll be super chaotic at first because of their quick speed and multiple spells to distract you like vanish, push, and pull, but then you realize these things do so little damage to the point where you can get up, go to the bathroom, come back down, realize you're hungry, run to your local Burger King, get a Big Mac, run back, eat the burger while watching this video, and still not have even dropped below half HP. As much of an exaggeration as that is, I think you get the idea that this boss altar doesn't prove to be much of a threat, if any threat to begin with. So this guy looked over at Matryoshka Idol and said, Do you mind if I become a higher level, faster, and glassier clone of you? With 11 phases, you'd think, oh, this guy's going to be an issue, and then you remember that all four of the level 70 legendaries do thunder, water, or air damage, which he is weak to 90% of the time. Once you realize that, this boss becomes so much of a joke to the point where it's even worse of one than myself. The only time I struggled with this boss was on one phase where I didn't manage to literally obliterate him with two spells when he went into his next phase, and the other time I was foolish and brought a fire weapon as a warrior to this fight, meaning it took forever. I'm sure we all remember the first time we did this boss altar and screamed our heads off at how in the almighty sweet lord we were supposed to solo this boss at the level you need to do it for the passage. Then I realized I needed to, I mean we needed to, actually get good at the game and not run straight into the boss's multi-hit like complete idiots. As soon as you enter the boss, your top priority is to slaughter the healers as fast as physically possible, because if you let them live, they will be a living wall between you and hurting the boss. Once you have done this, the boss is very easy to dodge with his multi-hit and charge, and it should be a cakewalk. The only thing between you and killing this random master of the temple dude is your ability to actually realize that using multiple weapons to get through elemental defenses is usually a good idea. Once you do this, he's honestly just your average ranged mob. The only two phases that might provide some trouble are his burst fire phase and his last phase, in which he makes it somewhat of an endurance fight thanks to his access to heal spell. Honestly, I would rate this guy lower if the last phase didn't actually give me trouble sometimes. Oh, oh yeah, the minions sit there and exist. Y yeah. Now we've got a bandit who's equipped with a state-of-the-art bazooka and is currently aiming it directly at you. For some reason, though, he's completely mystified by the ancient strategy used by our ancestors known as circle strafing. This boss is just a test of your greed and patience, as he can very easily kill you within seconds if you don't keep this in check. Once you master the ability to not hold the WASD keys into an arrow flying at you, he becomes a living joke. So I'm going to give you the two-step plan for fighting this one. Step 1, get a thunder weapon. Step 2, abuse that thunder weakness the boss has like no tomorrow. If you manage to follow these steps, then you should have no problem turning this boss into the scrap metal that it is. That being said, his flamethrower and meteor can prove to be annoying sometimes, but what you really want to watch out for is the walking time bombs underneath you. Throughout the whole fight, these random robots will run through the tunnels under your unsuspecting feet and proceed to explode without your consent. Depending on your defenses, these can either almost one-hit KO you or do at least a third of your HP, making them very annoying. Since you have to be aware of these things existing throughout your fight, Geyser Pit proves to be more of a struggle for me than other bosses listed prior to here. This boss, unlike Challenge of the Blade, severely punishes you if you don't handle minions well. At the level you probably face off against this guy, you don't even have your 4th spell, and don't even have a single tier 3 spell upgrade. Plus, these guys actually do damage, unlike Challenge of the Blades. 
Granted though, the minions die relatively quickly outside of the archers who just sit there pelting you with arrows and even taunting you further by charging closer to you. The boss himself is annoying because he has a massive wall of HP for that level, being 7000, and can constantly chuck out meteors if he so pleases along with the ability to say ha ha ha, psych, and slap on a heal spell. Not to mention he's going to be running away from you most of the fight since his minions are constantly spawning and thanks to his healbot AI he follows them around. While the minimum level is 20 for this boss, you're probably going to have gotten to level 21 anyway since you have to do the quest and grind the rotten flesh prior to the fight. This gives you access to your third spell which makes the fight considerably easier. Like Rotten Passage, you don't even have your fourth spell yet, and the actual recommended level for this boss doesn't even include your third spell yet like Rotten Passage. Since you probably won't have any real defense outside of HP at this level, this rejected version of a final cow god boss to worship Salted in all his bone vine ship is just over here screaming, I WILL KILL YOU WITH HEAVY CHARGE. And the scarecrows are just really, really annoying. The boss can be quite trivial though, depending on the gear you use and especially what level you do it at so we can easily move up and down. This boss can go one of two ways. If you're an archer and an assassin and you stun lock like the spell spammer you know you deep down aspire to be, then he probably won't be much of an issue. If you're major warrior though, prepare yourself for an annoying and chaotic endurance fight between you and the guy who is busy tryharding Plague Incorporated evolved mega brutal bioweapon in his basement. Due to his elemental defense in everything, to go along with his 50,000 HP for a level 55 boss, this guy is not to be underestimated. The fight gets progressively harder and harder the longer you brawl it out, thanks to his minions spawning more and more. Since two out of three of these minions are practically unkillable at level, you are going to have very few moments of downtime, even with the ability to stunlock. These minions are also extremely annoying because they can blow up in your face, debuff you, the list really goes on. And don't forget the boss is just hurling pots at you in the distance and can TP whenever he pleases. This lovely duo promises nothing but to pound your hopes and dreams into the ground even harder than their imprisonment did to them. You want to kill the unfettered guy first because they can and will use heal spell to completely ruin your day. The other guy does have extremely annoying and lethal burst fire as he is currently trying to cosplay as Psychomancer from Kirahive but can't quite spam hard enough. Then both of these guys have a second phase to laugh at you even harder when you thought you were about done with dealing with just that single first phase. If you get both into the second at the same time, I suggest focusing the faster guy first as he will distract you with his speed and vanishing. Killing him first only leaves the slower guy left, but if you let your greed take over, he can kill you with his meteor. Not to mention these guys have ultra high HP at the level it is recommended to fight them. This fight is made easier by focusing one of them before going for the other though, so I highly recommend doing so. If the two in Prison of Souls were a lovely couple, then these two birds were a match made in heaven. Upon entering the boss, you'll notice an egg and quickly realize it's meant to be unkillable and you begin to fall slowly into a spiral of chaos and confusion. Add a Master is a pretty basic but lethal ranged mob, utilizing everybody's favorite spells, heal and push, along with chucking out meteors and occasionally teleporting whenever he so chooses. Uh, wait, sorry, Add a Master is a she, I keep forgetting. That confusion about the egg I spoke of before all washes away when you hear the hiss and boom as Erder appears, he rushes at you like he's late to an appointment and you have his car keys. Erder accurately represents every spell spammer ever and, if not killed fast enough, will just begin to go all out what I like to call the YOLO screw it mode of a spell spammer's career and just start cascading particles across the screen. On top of this, Erder has somewhat high HP and basically complete earth resistance too. He can pull spam, multi-hit spam, etc. you into literal oblivion and give you no opportunity to hit the boss. Oh yeah, and by the way, while all of this is happening, Adam Master is probably just sipping a cup of tea as she spam healed back to her massive 400,000 HP, while Erder is essentially sitting on top of you. 
if Erder manages to come into the picture at all, immediately kill him. Erder will also be a constant threat as upon killing him, he only goes back into his egg to wait to rush out again because he still wants his car keys back. This boss though becomes a lot easier if you do it at level 100, so I wouldn't be surprised if lots of people disagree with this being the second hardest. And Adam Master alone is nowhere near deserving of this position, it's just that when she's paired with Erder, it becomes extremely dangerous, in my opinion. And to no one's surprise, we hit this guy. If you want Stinger, Slider, Breaker, or Bonder, then you're going to be tangling with the living fluffball of destruction himself, and you better quite literally physically prepare for this one. He's got annoying charges, push and pull spells that can lead to your death because the RNG gods gave you a giant L, meteors that dare you to step a centimeter near him, the cores and Weibull himself having the ability to one hit KO you whenever they so please, requiring the ability of arena awareness and multitasking to avoid the cores and pressure plates, swarms of minions that can cause you to panic and heal the boss and debuff you, moderately high to very high amounts of health in each phase, all while trying to actually hit the thing. He offers you very brief amounts of downtime, and the times he does, he is probably flying at you from the other side of the arena anyway, because it's time to take even more damage. Phases 1 and 3 aren't too bad, but Phase 5 is basically if Phase 1 and Phase 3 were on steroids. Not to mention Phase 2 and Phase 4 are just trying to survive as he runs around like he's drunk or something. When you finally manage to get the killing blow on this boss, prepare to probably feel happy for about 5 seconds. Then you realize you didn't get the weapon you wanted and you need to fight him again and that Cybul is still a thing. And you better pray to the RNG lords themselves if he starts practically flying around heavy charge spamming and his cores decide to use pool or he decides to use push and that inevitably ends in him landing on top of you and you have zero time to react and he one shots you because hardy har har. In the footage you're currently seeing I was using LI items because I forgot to record when I was fighting him at 99 but then I got too lazy to go get my other accessories off the character that was using them who is currently sitting in Canyon of the Lost. Anyways, I'm still trying to feed my addiction, known as Hollow Knight, hashtag not sponsored, but there you go, have some win content I guess, even though if I'm being quite honest, win has started becoming boring again. Also keep in mind that these are just my opinions, but since people treat some opinions like fact, feel free to destroy my opinions using facts and logic.